Well, here we are with my Broadway Limited New York Central J1E Hudson. Uh, preparing to give him an enhanced painting. Um, I got a good practice run in on the monogram plastic model of a Hudson locomotive and I'm gonna take what I've discovered doing that and I'm gonna transfer to this one here. But before I do, there's a few things I'd like to point out uh, on things I've done with this locomotive to prep it for painting. I have the track laid out here on the board. I did not screw through this track. This is my Cotto unit track. This is the power track. Uh, what I did was I put two uh, wood screws here at the front. Let's see if I can show them. And here at the front. Cover them with the painter's tape so that they would not short out the track touching against the, um, against the rail. Okay, what I have here is the Cotto unit track attached to the board for this project. As you can see, here's the blue painter's tape, okay, attached to the side of the ballasting of the track. Part of it is folded over. And here, are the two wood screws. Now they're not, they're not screwed through the track. They're screwed into the board just ahead of the track. And then these screws were wrapped with blue painter's tape so as not to contact the rails and possibly cause a short. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna use the Cotto uh, re-railer to put this locomotive and tender onto the track. And this just allows them to go on nice, neat, and smooth. I'll pull this out from underneath, like so. As you can see, there is tape, painter's tape, attached to the track. It's actually attached to the board. I tore off a strip, gently folded over the top edge, and this will allow me to paint the wheels as they turn so that no paint builds up in one, in one place on the drivers or on the driver uh, wheels. Also, the other thing you'll notice, I took some painter's tape and I taped off the window. The reason is, well, there's two reasons. One, it does have a little uh, glazing on the, um, on the inside of the window. And also there's an opening in the window and they have a uh, fireman and engineer installed in the locomotive cab. So to keep the paint from getting on them, if I want to weather them, I'll do them separately. But in this instance, I don't want paint getting on them. The other thing I did was to put a little tiny piece of painter's tape across the front number board and to cut as spherical a piece as I could to put over the headlight. I do not want paint getting into those features. I also removed the entire bell housing from the top. And there's a little hole here, the, the piece just snaps in. There's a, there's a little hole there, and that has been covered with a piece of blue painter's tape as well. Now, this is a smoking unit. Uh, it allows smoke to come out of the smokestack. So, to keep paint from getting down in there and ruining not just damaging, but ruining the smokestack, I'm using these little makeup applicators. And you can get these in various makeup supply stores. They are rounded, conical on one end, and a flat, blunt applicator on the other end. And what I'm going to do with this is real simple. I'm taking this and I'm simply going to gently wedge it in to the smokestack. Let's get that little piece of fiber off of there. There we go. Okay. Um, you can find them at Sally's Beauty Supply. It's where I got these. Here is the container. They're just a little simple makeup applicators. 
A locomotive is nearly ready to begin painting. Before I begin painting, I'm going to apply a little power to the track. And I'm going to show you how these bumpers, for want of a better term, how those bumpers are going to keep the locomotive from moving off the track. I'm simply going to mute the sound during this process. As you can see, the drivers are going. And I can put them to a decent speed so that they continue to turn during the airbrushing. Now, I want to point out what I'll do is I simply have to hold the airbrush at a level place here. And the wheels turning and the drivers moving back and forth, the wheels going round and round, every millimeter of the thing will, whoops, <laughs> I need to shut the smoker off. Every millimeter of this thing will continue to get covered by paint. Let me shut the smoker unit off. That should be that. Smoke out of there. I almost suffocated him with my brilliant idea. But anyway, and then we shut him down. That's what's going to be happening during the paint application on the Broadway Limited Hudson locomotive. Here we go. Uh, one more thing before I get started with painting. Below the cab on the uh, locomotive, as you can see here, is an on-off switch. This controls the smoke unit. I'm going to turn it off so that I don't have any more surprises as I had yesterday. Put a little light on that. There we go. The on-off switch, located directly under the cab, okay, on the engineer's side of the cab. I turned it off so that I have no more surprises like I did yesterday in case I forget to shut it off at the, uh, the power source. One more thing. I also want to remove the front uh, coupler here. This is a non-functioning coupler. It's simply a plastic insert. Eventually, this is going to have a, um, a replacement coupler, a uh, KD-158 scale head coupler will be installed there in its place. But for now, I want to remove the existing coupler. There we go. Takes a little bit of doing, but you can pull it free. Here we are. And this is what the coupler looks like. Okay? Simply, sometimes you can squeeze it on the inside. Other times, it's best if you, if you just pull it. Uh, keeping pressure against the pilot so as not to dislodge it from the locomotive. Pull this free and simply put it aside. I'm going to put it in the same little glass container that the bell housing is being held in. And this is just a little test to make sure the smoke unit is, in fact, turned off. I'm going to apply some track power. Increase the throttle a little bit. Checking to make sure that the mute was, was on and everything else was functioning. All right, so. Looks like we're ready to begin painting. First color I'm going to apply to the engine and the tender is the Badger Model Flex 16-01 engine black. And I have a full pipette here. And I'm going to put that into the color cup of my Pache airbrush. I'm going to take a second pipette full. I'm just going to let the pipette fill up on its own and Wemo, two full pipettes of the engine black color. 
Okay, I'm gonna put this down in my little foam egg crate cradle. And now I'm going to cover the paint. Put the little plastic bag back over in place. Now my left hand has a nitro glove on it that in case I need to touch the locomotive and tender for any reason, I don't want to get fingerprints on any possible wet paint. My right hand is what I operate the airbrush with. And so we begin. So you want to be careful, the little louvers on the top of the cab tend to get blown open with this. So you want to be a little careful of that. You want to be aware of that. Now the numbers on this actual Broadway Limited locomotive are nice and bright to begin with. So they're not being as darkened the way the, um, the, way the decals were on the, uh, on the model. Around to the other side. I kind of figure having the wheels running is doing several things. Besides allowing the paint to contact the wheels evenly, it's also allowing the, or I should say preventing, the running the drive rods from gumming up too much, if at all. I'm going to increase the throttle speed a little bit, get some speed going on them. We can get some speed. Yeah, here we go. Uh, there is quite a bit of difference being made here on this metal. It's no longer silver. It no longer has that toy appearance. And the entire locomotive is losing its new shininess, along with the tender. Hard to tell sometimes with this black, but it is coming out of the airbrush. And it is contacting the locomotive. That's the main thing. That's what I want. Because I've never painted one of these babies before, so this is uh, all a little kind of nerve-wracking to me. <laughs> thrown it into reverse so I can catch the pilot away from the uh, screws. It's going to take a couple of minutes because I've got it. I have the acceleration and deceleration adjusted. The CV for that adjusted on this locomotive. But he should be moving back. Okay. All right, let's get him reset there. Yeah, I may have to clean the wheel treads before he decides to move. Okay, I got it, buddy. I got you. My old pal. All right, we've got it. That's about it for the black at this point. At this point, I'm going to run the hair dryer over them to kind of speed dry the paint a little bit.
Very well, good. The wheels are back to moving again. You notice that. Well, I got what I wanted done mostly is to get the shine of the uh, that new locomotive finish off of him. The shine, the factory shine is gone. So I'm pretty pleased with that. And the next thing is we'll let him dry. I'm gonna let the paint make sure the paint dries thoroughly. Then I'm going to make sure all the sounds and everything are functioning. And uh, the next step will be to apply the uh, the brown and then the overspray of black black just like on the uh, the monogram model. All right, the paint is dry and. Um, had a bit of a scare. I uh, couldn't get power to the locomotive properly. So what I did was I took the uh, little uh, makeup applicator uh, cotton swabs, put some of the uh, Badger airbrush cleaner on the tip, and while the locomotive was running, I got in here and I cleaned the treads. Uh, then I removed it all from the, uh, uh, the treads of the drivers, I should say, the contact. Uh, part of the driver wheels. Then I took them off the track and laid them down and I then cleaned off the uh, the pilot track, the pony uh, the pony wheels. I cleaned off the trailing wheels. Only the parts, only the, the surface that contacts the track. Did the same thing with the wheels on the trucks of the caboose. Okay. I then, uh, while it was off the track, I then took another one of these uh, little applicators and I went over with some airbrush cleaner and I cleaned and buffed up the track again. Obviously some paint contacted where it should have contacted and that eliminated all electrical contact, most electrical contact. I was getting a little a little puff of noise, a little a little of noise and then it went silent. But for now, uh, right now he's on mute. I'm gonna put the sound back on. I'm going to power it down. <coughs> I'll put the power back up again. And I'm going to hit the startup key, which is F9. All seems well there. Let's test the bell. That's not the bell. Here's the bell. F1 is the bell. F2 is the whistle. Now we'll put him in gear. And you can see the, the drive rods are no longer bright and shiny. Now I may or may not spray the brown. Uh, what I have discovered is that these DCC locomotives are a lot more sensitive than a static plastic model. So what I may do on this, I, I don't know, I, I, it took a lot more black than it would take the brown to kind of highlight it. I may go ahead and highlight it with the brown, and if I need to clean the wheels again, I'll clean the wheels again. But I'm gonna go ahead and give it another shot along the bottom of the uh, brown as I did yesterday. In fact, I have a, a new formula for the brown. I may mixed rust, possibly some roof brown, along with the, uh, the earth tone that I put in yesterday. And uh, we'll go from there. But for now, that's where we are on the Broadway Limited. Okay, I've just made up a mixture of rail brown, roof brown, and rust, uh, with roof brown, the darker brown, being the um, majority color. I'm gonna give a little, a little hit to the front of the pilot but I'm going to block off the track at this point. And 
hope we can catch this on camera. I don't know if we will or not, but you'll see the end results. That looks, oh, I like that. That just gave it a little bit of a somewhat rust color here. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> that didn't take a whole lot. Now let's get him on the road again. I'm keeping the sound going to let me know how the um, DCC function is functioning, I guess. I'm going to give him a little bit of, just a little bit of speed here, a little, a little throttle. And I'm just going to do this lower portion here of the, um, the drivers and the drive rods ever so slightly. A little bit here on the trailing truck. A little bit on the cylinder. Now we're going to go to the other side. The cylinders, the drive rods, the wheels, some of the underside piping. I'm at a low angle shooting up with the airbrush at this point. Now, let's put a little drier air on them. Dry the other side. Okay then, I've given another little burst of the custom brown mix color to the uh, pilot right here. And again, with the, with the, um, the plastic non-functioning coupler gone from here, this will allow me to cut and trim and fit the scale head coupler in here. It's on the uh, New York Central's, the couplers, this was a New York Central uh, invention. The couplers could be dropped when not in use, and that would sort of streamline the front and get more speed because the Hudson's were known for one thing, Speed. 79 inch drivers, uh, huge, huge boiler and firebox, all for getting passengers to their destinations on time. And then some. Okay, I've added a little more brown under the, uh, to the bottom side up on the cylinders here. I like the way that looks. I've added a little more of the brown color to the trailing trucks here. I like the way that looks. Let's show the trailing trucks, shall we? Yes, let's. So they, they look a little more dirty. It's not that they're rusty, they're dirty. And you can see all along the bottom of, he, of the, uh, the engine, along the, the lower pipes, dirty. Uh, it happens, okay? And this is gonna be, you know, a uh, working locomotive. He'll have a line of River Rossi passenger cars to take around. So he's a, he's a working locomotive. Used but not abused, like I said, I love that phrase. I love that turn of phrase. Again, we have the same thing here. We have the um, pilots. I'm sorry, the, uh, the cylinders with a little more brown added. We have the trailing trucks with a little more brown added. In fact, I might give them a little, just a little burst more, because I do like that look. So we're gonna just, just a burst. Make sure you have paint coming out of the airbrush. Give them a shot. And that looks nice. Cylinder. And let's, let's get the wheels going one more time. And there we go. I like that look. I really like that look. I'm not one for dirty locomotives, but this looks real natural right now. Yeah, we got them on both sides, that's for sure. 
I like the look. Now to give them a slight covering of the steam engine black, like I did on the model. Not enough to cover everything up, but just enough to kind of tone it a little bit. Okay, I went over the uh, brown painted areas with the hair dryer. And right now, I've got some steam engine black in the airbrush. And I'm going to apply that over the brown coloration I just applied. Just kind of a misting. I'm going to get him going. He gets his wheels going, his drivers and the drive rods. I want to get him going up to a good speed. And I've got to let him know I'm coming. So here we go. Just some steam engine black. Not a lot. Takes, just takes the brown down, just a, just a touch, just a touch. I'm going to hit the other side now. Now that both sides have been touched with the, uh, the steam engine black, I'm just going to dry a little bit with the hair dryer. We got some paint on the track again. This is what I was talking about, what it did. It's got a little bit of paint on the track and the contact wheels, the uh, contact side of the uh, bottoms of the drivers and the, uh, the track. Just needs a little bit of cleaning. We'll get them back. Yeah, we'll clean the surface of the tracks. That seems to be the big problem is the rails, there's paint on the rails. But this, the cleaner cleans it off right away. And then you can hear the sound is back and he should be coming into view any moment. Here he comes. Now I'll take the pointed end of this makeup applicator and I will hit the contact surfaces of the wheels just to remove the paint from them just to ensure that we have full contact and there's quite a bit of paint comes off as you can see here quite a bit of paint and to do this front driver I can't get in from the top so I go down from the bottom and just let them, there we go. Doesn't take a lot to get them clean, just a little bit. And you have to do the other side as well. Nice and clean on the edges. And that's it for the airbrushing on this on this uh, locomotive. I've gotten done all I want to get done on him. And I'm pretty pleased with the results. Now any further weathering will be done with brush, very sawdust brushes, and thinned uh, Badger Model Flex colors, rail brown, rust, uh, reefer gray, light gray or primer gray, 
and I will create indications where there's steam uh, emitted and that of course causes lime scale on the, uh, the cylinders and there are other areas of course around the whistle uh, along the top we'll need that uh, we'll need that done as well so pretty good I'm happy Okay, now that I've had my fun, <laughs> I need to put some parts back in place. Uh, I'm going to start with the bell. Okay, here we have the little piece of tape. I'm going to use a needle if I could find one. Here we go. It's a little, just a little needle probe to lift the tape. And then I can grab it with this little forceps here. And you can see the hole that's exposed there. And that will accept the bell housing right there, like so. And you line it up, and you push it in. I know that the bell must swing front to back, so the thing is to get the housing back in the hole. And for that, I'll use a wooden modeling tool. You want to avoid metal tools with plastic. You don't want to scratch or break anything. But you want to line up the hole and be able to put this back in place. Sometimes it helps if you can swing the bell off to one side, and that'll give you a clear field on the base to help push that down into place. And there we have it, like so. Now it's a simple matter of pushing the bell back into an upright position. I'll press it, make sure this is pressed firmly down. Now push the bell back, like so. The bell is all back in place, and it stayed all nice and shiny. And that's what you want, shiny, shiny bell. Next thing to do is to remove the tape from the front number board and the headlight. Well, that came away really easily. I'm happy, happy to say. Do the same thing. I'm going to lift away with a pin first. and away it came. And again, what we've got here is a clean headlight and a clean number board. Headlight off. Headlight back on.
Happy, happy, joy, joy. Oh, we have one more little item to loosen up. And that is the tape over the windows on each side. And get a bite with the forceps, tweezers. Pull that off. There's our fireman. And on the other side, of course, we have the engineer. We have some, some happy guys in the cab. And a happy owner.